Spain, 130 million years ago, a land of vast lowlands, parted by many rivers and lakes. This land is full of unique dinosaurs, and down by the riverbanks, we find one species specialized for the often flooded environment. Pelicanomimus is an early ancestor of the Ornithomimosaurian group, a family that will spread across the northern continents and produce many species. Unlike its more ostrich-like descendants, Pelicanomimus still has teeth in its beak, a holdover from its more carnivorous origins. Pelicanomimus do eat plants, however to survive they need meat, and they get it from the many waterways they visit every day. They feed mostly on amphibians, however they also go after fish, mainly sticking to the shallows. Like a modern crane, they will locate prey with their keen eyesight, and then strike forward with their long beaks. They have another adaptation for catching and holding prey that some modern birds have evolved. Under their jaws they have an evolved simple gola sac, or throat pouch, that they can store fish and amphibians they catch, similar to a pelican. The pelicanomimus means pelican mimic. At around 2 meters they are similar in size to some pelicans, but pelicanomimus are near the bottom of the food chain, and are common targets for larger predators, ones that are purely carnivorous. Away from the river and watching from the trees is one of their main threats, Gongavenator. Easily recognized by his signature raised hip sail, this 5 meter predator is too small to tackle large prey like the local iguanodonts, so he goes after smaller meals. The Pelicanomimus may be swift and agile, but so is he, and since they are so lightly built, they don't put up much of a fight when he catches one. The flock he is watching is spread out across the riverbank, with most wading in the shallow water, and some others resting on the sandy banks. He is a young individual, and yet to perfect the art of the silent approach. So despite his best efforts, the sound of crunching leaves and moving foliage gives away his position to the Pelicanomimus sentries, and they cry out in alarm. All the heads of the Pelicanomimus rise into the air in response, looking to see where the threat was coming from. The concavenator tries his luck, and bolts forward, aiming for the closest of the long-necked dinosaurs. All the Pelicanomimus see him approaching, and each one of them has the same response. The ones already in the river dive into the deeper section, completely disappearing below the surface with barely a splash. Those on the shore run with the concavenator hot on their heels, before repeating what their flockmates have done, and dive into the water, disappearing beneath the slow-flowing river. Predator stops at the water's edge, confused and annoyed. It's as if the entire group vanished in a flash. This isn't the first time he has seen Pelicomimus do this. When on dry land they simply run, but when near water, they throw themselves in without hesitation. Curiosity gets the better of the young hunter, and he steps into the river till the water is up to his knees, and then lowers his head beneath the surface. He sees that all the Pelicanomimus are moving along the riverbed, digging into the mud and water plants with their feet and forearms, steadily moving away from the predator. Some have to return to the surface to breathe, but when they swim up, they only have to stick the tip of their beaks out of the water so that their nostrils can take a breath. The concavenator is unsure what to do with this information. He is nowhere near as strong a swimmer as the Pelicanomimus, who seem to barely pay attention to the predator's gaze. In the end, the hunter pulls his head out of the water and retreats back to the forest defeated and hungry. The Pelicanomimus eventually stick their heads out of the river and see the coast is clear. Once one returns to the shore, the others follow soon after. Though they are mostly waders, the Pelicanomimus do sometimes feed from the bottom of rivers, though this is usually because they are avoiding predators or when there is no other food available. They spend much of their time on land, as there are multiple species of crocodilians that call the waterways home. So no matter how terrifying the concavenator may be, they stand a better chance at outrunning land predators than outswimming the marine ones. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the oldest of the mimic dinosaurs, Pelicanomimus. Pelicanomimus's first remains were discovered in 1993 in Spain. Though we only have the one skeleton, it is more than half complete, containing the skull, lower jaws, all the neck vertebra and most of the back vertebra, ribs, sternum, the pectoral girdle, and complete right forelimb and most of the left forelimb. There are even impressions of soft tissue from the back of the skull, around the neck and around the front limbs, 
Pelicanomimus belongs to the Ornithomimosauria family, and is the most basal of the group. This is not just due to its age, as it lived around 130 million years ago in the early Cretaceous, but also due to its features. It grew to between 2 and 2.5 metres long, stood between 1 and 1.5 metres tall, and weighed between 17 and 35 kilograms. It is a fairly standard build for its family, being very ostrich-like, with long limbs, long neck, and a small head with a beak. However, Pelicanomimus still has teeth. Only one other member of this family has any teeth at all, that being Harpy Minus from Mongolia. Not only did it still have teeth, but it had 220 of them, more than any other theropod. The teeth at the front of the jaws were D-shaped, while the back teeth were blade-like, and the teeth on the top jaw were much larger than those of the lower jaw. These teeth were evolved for cutting and ripping, however all later ornithomimosaurs would lose their teeth, developing keratinous beaks as a replacement. So Pelicanomimus may have been more carnivorous than its descendants, though their beaks were still capable of cutting and ripping even without teeth. Pelicanomimus's head was quite long and narrow even for an ornithomimosaur, being 4.5 times its maximum height, with a small crest at the back likely made of keratin. The soft tissue impressions found on the holotype showed that Pelicanomimus had what's called a gola pouch on its neck. Gola pouches, or throat sacs, are most well known on pelicans, but can be seen on other water birds. It is therefore assumed that Pelicanomimus used it in a similar way, to store any prey it caught in the pouch while also allowing it to drain any excess water out of its mouth. Pelicanomimus may have acted similar to a crane or heron, wading through shallow water looking for fish, amphibians, small reptiles, etc. It would then strike forward with its long beak, securing prey with its hundreds of teeth before swallowing, storing it in its gullar pouch, or if prey was too large, tearing it apart with its blade-like teeth first. The arms and hands of Pelicanomimus were long and slender, with the ulna and the radius bones strongly adhered to each other, and straight claws as opposed to curved ones. This is common in most basal ornithomimosaurs, and though the arms were likely quite rigid, they may have been used for holding onto prey or manipulating plants for feeding. The tissue impressions we have show wrinkled skin, so Pelicanomimus may have not had feathers, or at least didn't have them in those particular parts of the body. On the remains, scientists found what they believe to be euconate processes, which are attachments to the ribs that assist in respiration, seen in modern birds. This is the first non-manoraptoran theropod found to have these structures, and proves that Pelicanomimus would have breathed like a bird. Pelicanomimus lived in a wetland environment, which may have been the reason it evolved to take advantage of the plentiful waterways. It shared its environment with many species of bird, reptiles, crocodiliforms, and dinosaurs like Concavenator, Mantillosaurus, Concornus, and even some mammals have been discovered there. So, Pelicanomimus, the toothy pelican mimic, a species that helped better understand the origins of the Ornithomimosaur group's origins. It is also a great addition to Spain's list of prehistoric animals. But what do you think of Pelicanomimus? And for my question of the week, do you believe that losing their teeth and becoming more omnivorous may be one of the reasons why the Ornithomimosaurs were so successful? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.